Assemblyman Mike Lawler is the man who introduced a bill in Albany to take Mario Cuomo's name off the Tappan Zee Bridge. And he says if he gets to go to Washington, he won't walk away from any fight. Thank you for being here today. I'd like to Thanks start by me. talking about abortion. Yep. You know, just a, a little while ago, last month, uh, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham introduced a bill that calling for a national abortion ban. I wonder, A, how you feel about it, but also, what do you say to voters who believe that if the Republicans take control of the House or the Senate, there'll be further challenges to the right to abortion? Well, I think what the Dobbs decision did was revert the issue of abortion rights back to the states. Uh, so I do not support a national ban on abortion. I think this is best left to the states. And in the state of New York, abortion is legal up to the day of birth. Uh, for me, I'm personally pro-life. That was a, a position that was really reaffirmed for me when my wife and I experienced a miscarriage a few years ago. Uh, you feel that loss. You don't get over that. And um, but I've always supported exceptions uh, for rape, incest, and the life of the mother. Uh, and I think reasonable people can have a reasonable discussion about this on what makes, makes the most sense. But what I don't support is what Sean Patrick Maloney supports, which is abortion up to the moment of birth, non-doctors performing abortions, a ban on parental notification, abortions for gender selection. It's extreme. Uh, Eighty percent of Americans oppose late-term abortion. Uh, so the only extremist on the issue of abortion is Sean Maloney. But do you think that, it, that if the Republicans take control of one or both houses in Washington, there will be some scaling back of abortion rights? No, I think, I think most Republicans agree that this is a state's rights issue. Um, I have not seen very many people come out in favor of what Lindsey Graham uh, proposed, uh, and I'm on record opposed to it. I think this is best left to the states, and so if a bill did come up, I would vote against it. So bail reform is a real hot topic these yes. days, and you were in Albany when this bill passed. Did you no, try to? I, no, I, you, you I came not? in in 2021, uh, and frankly, I ran on the issue of bail reform. That's why I got elected in a two-to-one Democratic district because I opposed it. Uh, but is but nothing has been done to stop it. So why I've introduced not? multiple bills uh, to repeal bail reform. The problem is the Democrats control everything in Albany, everything in New York City, and everything in Washington, and they've created a mess. Cashless bail is the single stupidest piece of legislation that has ever been introduced. Forty percent of those who have been released on non-monetary bail for felony offenses have been rearrested since cashless. So bail are you took saying effect. that they're playing with the numbers? Oh, absolutely. The Democrats cherry-pick the numbers when it comes to cashless bail. But the stats are clear. Cri index crimes are up 36% since cashless bail took effect. This is unsustainable. And I listened to you know, Mr. Maloney talk about this, but the reality is this. All of us, as elected officials, have an obligation. It's not just enough to say, oh, it's, it's on Albany. No, it's on all of us to vocally oppose cashless bail, demand that judges get discretion, and ensure that New York State enacts a dangerousness standard. We are the only state in the country that does not have a dangerousness standard, and we're seeing the impacts. People are getting attacked in the street, not just with guns, but knives. Car thefts are up 91 percent in New York City since cashless bail took effect. People don't think the law applies. People in your district are really concerned about the economy. Yeah. And one of the things they're concerned about is congestion pricing. Yes. I wonder, I know that the legislature has passed congestion pricing, but I wonder if you were elected to Congress, is there anything you can do in Washington to stop this train from leaving the station? So I was, uh, one of the first acts that I did, I introduced legislation to repeal c congestion pricing. Uh, this is nothing more than a tax on suburban and outer borough commuters, uh, and it's outrageous. $23 to enter into lower Manhattan, that's about $6,000 a year. Absolutely. How? And that's And that's where Sean Maloney has failed. Under the previous administration, they did have congestion pricing held up because of all the environmental regulations. I will do everything in my power working with Congresswoman Maliotakis and others, including uh, Josh Gottheimer over in, in New Jersey. To, who's a Democrat. To, who's a Democrat to block congestion pricing and repeal it outright. This has not worked anywhere in the world. It will not work here. It's not going to do anything to stop congestion. All, it's, all it is is a money grab by the MTA, which is the worst-run authority in America. But if the MTA doesn't get the money from congestion pricing to do the capital projects that it needs, where is it going to get the money to fix the system? 
Well, they can start by enforcing uh, their fares. You know, when you let people uh, jump the turnstile and you don't enforce that, uh, that's millions of dollars every year that get lost in revenue. The MTA has borrowing authority. The MTA got billions of dollars in a bailout from the federal government. It gets billions from the state. So the MTA has a lot of money. They are just horribly mismanaged. It needs to be completely overhauled. Um, and they need to prioritize where they're investing in. So still talking about the economy, is there anything that you can do in Washington to put more money back in the pockets of the people who you represent? I know that in, when you were in, in Albany, you had this really interesting bill called the, um, the exploded tire bill. Yeah. So that if people um, had damage to their car from a road, they would get a thousand dollar tax credit. Absolutely. Is there anything like that, any novel ideas that you could think of in Washington that could put more money back in the pockets of your constituents? As I'm out campaigning, the biggest issue I get asked about is affordability. Whether we're talking about inflation, whether we're talking about taxes, the high cost of living in the Hudson Valley, we all feel it. You know, my wife just went to the grocery store uh, last week. She paid six dollars for a gallon of milk. $4.50 for eggs, $29 for diapers. We need to tackle affordability. So we have to cut spending, number one. Number two, uh, we have to lift the cap on salt so that New Yorkers can fully deduct their state and local taxes. I'm fully committed to doing that. And we have to ensure that America is energy independent again. Energy impacts everything that we do. It impacts the costs of goods, manufacturing, the cost of living, we have to reduce energy costs. Blown tire tax credit, things like that, absolutely, because you know why? We have to stop nickel and diming our citizens and our residents and make it easier for them to afford to live. If our roads are not being invested in and somebody blows a tire, we should be helping them out. Well, you know, since the, the federal government passed this big infrastructure bill, you'd think that the federal government might want to adopt your, your idea. They should. Because, because they're trying to do more infrastructure. But moving right along, I'd like to talk to you about the migrant situation and uh, whether, whether you think that the first steps that the uh, Department of Homeland Security is taking to limit the number of Venezuelans coming into the country is a good thing, a bad thing, and is it just a down payment on what needs to be done? I think it's a down payment on what needs to be done here. We, we have a crisis at our southern border. Uh, it is porous right now, and it's not just the tens of thousands that are coming across the border every day, over three million since Joe Biden took office. Uh, but it is also the human trafficking, women and children being raped and assaulted, and the massive inflow of drugs. The cartels are pouring uh, fentanyl into our communities, killing 300 Americans a day. Over 100,000 Americans died last year. This is unacceptable and it's unsustainable. As the husband of an immigrant, my wife came here over a decade ago. She became a citizen two years ago. We welcome immigration and we, they enrich our communities, our culture and our economy, but we have to have a legal process. This is not working. But what about the flights that are coming into the airports in your, neighbor, in your area, it's Westchester outrageous. Airport and, and Stewart Airport? Um, would, should they be coming there? Should people coming into this country be relocated upstate as opposed to all being in New York City? Look. Well, New York City made itself a sanctuary city. So the idea now that they're all aghast that you have this massive inflow of, of illegal immigration, well, then join the rest of us in securing the border and fixing our broken immigration system. These flights into Westchester County Airport and Stewart Airport and Orange County Airport are outrageous. And the Biden administration has been doing them in secret. They have not been coordinating with local law enforcement and local officials. And these migrants are being dumped into communities all across the Hudson Valley. And it's wrong. It's wrong. We need to get this under control. So we only have about 30 seconds left. I have to ask you, should Donald Trump be the nominee of the Republican Party in the next presidential election? Look, I would, I would like to see the party move uh, in a different direction. I think a lot of the policies that he advocated for were good. Uh, but I think it's time to really turn the page and uh, focus in on really moving our country in, a, in the right direction with respect to affordability, public safety, energy, and immigration. So we're going to have to leave it right there. But our conversation continues right after the show on our streaming network, CBS News New York. We'll be right back.